Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is religion and health. And we're fortunate to have with us to talk about religion and health uh, Dr. Cubitt Pohl, a psychiatrist in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And of course, Dr. Pohl, let me uh, welcome you to uh, the show this morning. Very good to be here. And, and of course, Dr. Pope, uh, you know, we've had you on a number of occasions, and each time you bring us such excellent information. Uh, we've talked about religion and uh, crime, and we've talked about unforgiveness and suicide among African Americans, and each time you bring us an extraordinary amount of information and a very, very unusual kind of information in terms of uh, where our consciousness might be when we receive such information. And uh, what I'd like to do today is to uh, simply uh, make preparation to receive such information dealing with religion and health. But before we get into that, let's uh, have you to give us some information about your background, your education, so that those who might not have seen uh, the uh, many shows that we've had an opportunity to uh, do with you, so that they'll know from what perspective uh, you're coming from, and uh, so that they will be able to better understand your information. Let's do it from that perspective. I'm a Christian psychiatrist in practice, private practice uh, here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm also a minister of the gospel, and I'm a former pastor of uh, two churches here in Nashville. Presently, I'm an associate minister at 15th Avenue Baptist Church, Dr. William Buchanan, pastor. I'm also involved in uh, forgiveness ministry, and I have a radio program, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, in a local, uh, at WNSG, mm -hmm. uh, 1240 AM on Forgiveness Works. At least the title of the program is Forgiveness Works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, uh, Dr. Uh, Poe, uh, what, what you're talking about uh, this morning has to do with uh, uh, the relationship between religion and health. Now, exactly how do you uh, develop such a relationship? I mean, how do you start uh, a, a topic such as this, religion and health? Well, I think we need to start with a definition of religion. Religion is essentially uh, one's relationship with God. And usually that's expressed in a particular uh, way. For example, uh, Catholics, uh, persons who are Catholic, uh, express their relationship with God uh, through attending mass. Um, uh, and they follow certain other rituals. Uh, persons who are Baptists follow certain unique rituals uh, unique to the Baptist church and, and so on. So religion is an expression of one's relationship with God as manifested in, in a certain religious uh, traditional uh, kinds of rituals in certain in certain rituals. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, but but now uh, when you bring health into this, you you're indicating that uh, uh, the religion that you practice will have something to do with uh, your bodily health. That's yes. Is that a relation? Is that what we're talking about? Very much so. As a matter of fact, um, the the research now has shown over the last 15 years, Dr. Haney, that people who pray on a regular basis. Uh, people who attend a place of worship, church, synagogue, or temple on a regular basis, meaning once or more a week. These people have better mental health, they have better physical health, they uh, live longer, they have better functioning immune system mm -hmm. uh, systems. Therefore, when they do get sick, mm -hmm. they recover faster. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know now, based on many studies, as a matter of fact, in the last century, uh, there was a total of about 1,200 studies done mm -hmm. in the area of religion and health, mm -hmm. and about 79% of them affirm that religion, mm -hmm. people who are religious, have better mental and mm -hmm. physical health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so the uh, research has already been done, but somehow we've moved beyond that, and we've not recognized that relationship in, 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 in modern society. Is that what we, is, is, would that be a fair assessment? Well, the research, uh, 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 there have been a number of studies now that affirm that religion improves health mm -hmm. and that uh, religion helps to protect against illness. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I'm religious, mm -hmm. that decreases my likelihood of developing depression. Mm -hmm. It decreases my likelihood of developing cancer, diabetes, hypertension, mm -hmm. heart disease. Mm -hmm. it, it extends my lifespan. Mm -hmm. It improves the quality of my life. Mm -hmm. uh, we have studies now that show that people who are religious, by and large, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, ha report more well-being. Mm -hmm. They have more positive emotions such mm -hmm. as joy and hope and optimism. Mm -hmm. And these positive emotions have been found to correlate mm -hmm. with uh, better mental and physical mm -hmm. health. Okay, Dr. Poe, well, what we're going to do, and, and it seems that we're ready for our first commercial break uh, uh, already, but uh, what we'd like to do is to uh, get the source of this. I mean, uh, certainly religion has all of, the, all of these positive things that you're saying, but now uh, what, what are some of the things, that, some of the sources of, 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 of all of these positive developments between religion and health? And that's what we want to do when we come back for our second commercial break to uh, talk about the relationship between religion and health. We're talking to Dr. Cuban.